Hello everybody. So what we're going to be looking at today is partial fraction decomposition. All right. Now, partial fraction decomposition is not actually an integration technique at all. Partial fraction decomposition is algebra. And so it's important that you know that because a lot of people, well not a lot, but um, a significant number of students when they're learning partial fraction decomposition do the actual partial fraction decomposition and then they think they're done with the problem and they don't actually integrate anything which you know is normally not what you're supposed to do so um, yeah so keep in mind that this is not calculus it's algebra so partial fraction decomposition is algebra algebra and not calculus all right um, that's great. What is it? How do we do it? That's what we want to know. So the basic idea is this. Uh, you know how to integrate certain things. So you can, so here's why, idea. You can integrate uh, things like this. So here's just some stuff that you would be able to find the antiderivative of. You'd be able to find this kind of antiderivative. It's a natural log. I'm not going to write the answers. You would be able to do this one. That's a, an inverse tangent. You would be able to do this one. That's a u substitution, and then it's a logarithm. You would even be able to do this one. That would be trig substitution. Okay, so maybe I'll just summarize, right? That's some kind of log, natural log actually. Um, this is uh, tangent inverse. Um, this one here is u sub and then a log. And this last one you would have to do trig substitution on, right? But the point is you would be able to handle those things. Okay, but not every uh, fraction looks like that. Not every rational function looks like this. Uh, many of them are like, well, other other things, right? Here's some. Um, you can integrate things like that, uh, but not so far uh, things like this. So you wouldn't be able to integrate let's say um, 5 over 2 plus x, x minus 7. I mean, you could do something. If you, had, if you actually had this, you could multiply out the denominator, complete the square, and then do trig substitution, uh, probably. But um, that's a lot of work. You wouldn't want to anyway. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do one that were like this for sure. Uh, five, I'm just making up the numbers here. I don't know why I used five twice. X minus three squared, X squared plus four. Something like this would also be impossible for you right now. Okay, and the idea is that what we wanna be able to do is take things that look like those last two integrals and then somehow split them up into integrals we can do. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, somehow uh, split this these up into smaller integrals that we could do. Okay, now um, before we even do any of this though, I want to just uh, remind us of a little bit of algebra so we can be on the same page. Um, so you need to be able to do long division for polynomials um, before we get started. And I'm not going to go over this in a ton of detail, but I'll do an example uh, to give you the idea here. So let's say we have, it doesn't even really matter what it is, the numbers are going to be weird if I just make up one but I'm just gonna make up one, so it is what it is. So let's say I have 
um, the example. Let's say I have uh, x to the fifth over, let's just say, 3x squared uh, plus 1. And I'm going to change this already. I want this to be 12 just because the math will work out a little bit nicer. All right? So I want to just uh, divide. Okay? Now, when you're doing long division for polynomials, you, which you have learned at some point, here's what you would do. Whatever the denominator is, you would write here. And then on top, you have to put whatever whatever's on top there. Um, so, like that. Okay? Uh, some people... Uh, let me let me do one more thing actually let me put like x to the fourth I might regret that but I'm gonna do it anyway um, now if I have that then I have to add it here as well the thing is is that um, I didn't leave any spaces for anything else but uh, some people will advocate writing like 0x to the 3 zero x to the two zero x plus zero there to have like placeholders for those terms um i don't necessarily agree with that just because it takes space and it's not strictly necessary um so i'll just leave it like it is and uh, try to do this problem anyway now if you're doing long division that means the top uh is higher degree than the bottom or the same so divide when the top degree is um, greater than or equal to the bottom. All right? Um, so then the way you start here, maybe I'll write some notes off to the side. Um, the way you start is you're going to ask yourself, you're going to look at the first terms, and you're going to say, uh, what do you multiply multiply 3x squared by to get 12x to the fifth. And so you'd figure out that the answer is uh, 4 to get the 12 and then x cubed, right? And then once you have the 4x cubed, what you would do is you would have to take this, multiply it by this, and write the result um, under here and that's why they like to have uh, things lined up but again we're not doing that so I multiply the 4x cubed by the 3x squared plus 1 I'm gonna get 12x to the fifth and then I'm going to get 4x cubed times 1 is gonna be 4x cubed and uh, you can write it you know off to the side if you don't wanna write it under the term that's already there Right? So you multiply that. Then what you need to do is put parentheses around this and subtract the top line minus the bottom line. And so when you do the top, not the top line, the purple line minus the green line. So when you subtract those, what I'm going to get is going to be 12x to the fifth minus 12x to the fifth is zero. Then I'm going to have the x to the fourth minus, well, there is no x to the fourth on the bottom one, so x to the fourth minus nothing is x to the fourth. I don't know why that looks like that. Um, change that. x to the fourth. Uh, and then there's nothing else on the top line, but there's still this uh, 4x cubed here. So you still, have the, you still have a minus and a 4x cubed. So subtract that minus 4x cubed, and you get minus 4x cubed, like that. Okay, now you don't need the zero because it's just taking up space. Uh, so you have 4x cubed minus 4x squared. Okay, uh, what are we going to do now? Well, now you're going to say kind of the same thing. You're going to say, what do we multiply by? What do we multiply? Again, it's uh, 3x squared by to get 
x to the fourth. Okay. So when we do that, we're going to end up with some fractions here. So um, you're going to have to multiply by, it looks like, uh, what are we going to have to multiply by? One third to get the one in front. Right, there's a one there. And then x squared to get the x to the fourth. So then you're going to multiply you're going to multiply this by this and then put the result here. So what are we going to get? We're going to get um, 1 3rd x squared times 3x squared is going to be x to the 4th. That had to work out. And then you're going to have 1 3rd x squared times 1. So 1 3rd x squared times 1 is 1 3rd x squared. Again, I'm going to write it here just to keep it from lining up with that 4x cubed. All right, then more parentheses and a minus sign just like before, and then you subtract these two terms. So you have, uh, what do you have? You have x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is zero. You have negative 4x cubed minus nothing is negative 4x cubed and then minus one third x squared. So that's minus one third x squared. All right, so we're here. I'm gonna try to move this over here. For space. And uh, we're gonna keep going. So um, next term, you're gonna say, what do you multiply by? Um, what do you multiply 3x squared by to get negative 4x cubed, right? So what's happening is the numbers are getting a little bit weird because this is a made up example, but I mean, this is just how it goes. So what do you multiply 3x squared by to get negative 4x cubed? Well, you're gonna need a 4 thirds Right, 4 thirds times 3 is 4. So you're going to need negative 4 thirds and then x. That should do it. So then you're going to take this. Oops. You're going to take this. You are going to multiply it by there. And it's going to go down there just like we did for the others. So what are we going to get? We're going to get... Uh, negative 4 thirds x times 3x squared is going to be negative 4x cubed. And then, again, I'm going to write it off to the side. Negative 4x cubed x times 1 is negative 4 thirds x. Then you're going to parentheses, subtract, and actually delete some of these lines here. Um, then you need to subtract. and we're gonna get whatever we get. So, what's that? So negative four x cubed minus minus four x cubed is zero, of course. Uh, you have negative one third x squared, so it's negative one third x squared. And then minus minus four thirds x. Minus minus is plus, so plus four thirds x. All right, we're almost done. We got one more of these to do. Um, last one is going to be, uh, what do you multiply 3x squared by to get negative one third x squared? And so the answer there, I believe, is going to be negative one ninth. Negative one ninth. Okay. So, can I move this again? Hold on. We're just so close to the end here. I'm gonna give myself enough space. It's gonna go on to the next, uh, next line. Unless, I'm gonna try one thing. Nope. possible. 
Okay, leave it. All right, um, anyway, so negative one ninth. So you're gonna multiply the negative one ninth times the x squared plus one. So, wait, hold on. I feel like that three has Three. Why can't I get the three? Okay, forget it. That three is supposed to be up here, right? Whoa, that's not the color that I should use. The three is supposed to be there, yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I left the three when I tried to move it. Sorry. Uh, okay, so negative one ninth times three x squared is going to be negative one third x squared. We know that, and um, negative one ninth times one is going to just be negative one ninth. And so, sadly, I'm running out of room on this line of work. But you're going to subtract those like we have, and uh, when you do, we are going to get this for a result. So you have negative one third x squared minus minus one third x squared that comes up zero that's the point point. Um, and then you have four thirds x minus nothing is four thirds x delete this and then you've got minus minus one ninth which is plus one ninth okay so we've done this work here and you need to be able to interpret the result so what the information we have here says is, let me write one more thing on here. So this right here, whatever, at this point, you have an X power, which is lower degree than what you, what you have over here, right? So um, let me write that. So the, right now you have um, the three X squared plus one uh, won't go into, four-thirds x plus one-ninth, so we're done. Okay, um, so that's how you know you're done when that power finally drops um, below what the power that you had on the outside of that, um, outside of the division symbol. Okay, so um, also what you end up with is called the remainder. Okay. And what it says is this. So the interpretation of what we've done is you've got your original thing, which was 12x to the fifth plus, what was it? x to the fourth over 3x squared plus 1 is equal to everything you've got up on the top of that uh, division. So 4x cubed plus 1 third x squared minus 4 thirds x minus 1 ninth and then the remainder is 4 thirds x plus 1 ninth but that's not how you usually write it normally you're going to write it this way 4x cubed plus 1 third x squared minus 4 thirds x minus 1 ninth and normally what you do with the remainder is you go plus the remainder over the original um, denominator there. So this would be the result. Okay, now why is that one so long? Um, and why do we have fractions? Because it's made up, okay? Um, if you have a better one, then you won't have to do that. Right? Now don't get too worried. Uh, there's a couple reasons you should not be too worried. So the first reason is you rarely have to do this. Okay, This is not like something you're gonna have to do all the time. Uh, the other reason not to be worried is it's really easy to get a computer to do this for you. So this was 12x to the fifth plus x to the fourth. So like if I go to Wolfram Alpha here, What was it? 12x to the fifth. I can't remember things. 12x to the fifth plus x to the fourth. 
plus x to the fourth over, that's not a carrot, over 3x squared plus 1, wasn't it? Enter. So you can just type that in, and I believe Wolfram Alpha will expand it for you if you scroll down. Sort of. Let's see here. Um, they kind of don't write it in a pretty form. Do they? I mean, I see it right here, right? Um, but you have the 4x cubed, 1 third x squared, 4 thirds x minus 1 ninth. Um, but then they didn't, uh, they didn't write it exactly the way we did here unfortunately. I wonder if I just said expand, what would they say? Yeah, nothing good. Oh well. Oh well. Maybe that's not as nice. Um, I don't know why they... Uh, why they're doing it that way. I'm going to type it in one more time. I'm going to look at their answers. Come on. Oh. No, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they wrote it quotient in remainder. Um, like, the first box here is the quotient. And then the second box over here, oops, this one on the right, the 4x over 3 plus 1 ninth, that's obviously the remainder. But it's not written in the form where it's easy to tell that that's the case. So, I mean, the information is there, but it's just not, it's just not written in the nicest way. Um, let's get back to this. Um, yeah, a little bit strange. But anyway, uh, so you don't have to do that very often and you can make a computer help you. I guess you can get Wolfram to do this form pretty easy, but you have to understand what where the numbers are that you need. Um, okay, so that's long division and it's something you can do. Now, um, forget long division. <laughs> Let's actually talk about uh, partial fraction decomposition, okay? So it turns out that uh, it turns out that uh, certain forms of fractions can be divided up into partial fraction decompositions, uh, or decomposed into partial fraction decompositions. Uh, so specifically, you can even know um, how they break apart. So like. Um, if you had something like this, like uh, let's say uh, 4 over x minus 3, x plus 2, and you wanted to perform a partial fraction decomposition on this, you could, and you would know what the decomposition would be. You would know that it's a constant a, you don't know it yet, but a constant a over x minus 3, and you would know that it was plus a constant b over an x plus 2, right? So what we have on the right is what we would call like the form of the decomposition. And, and that, that's what it is for this one, okay? Now, um, really what you need to do here is it doesn't matter where they came from or anything like that, um, what it matters is that you're going to list them out and you're going to learn them so you can apply the correct one in the correct case. Okay, um, and why are they the correct ones? Because they work, right? That's why. So, you know, it's not like deep thinking. So the forms that you need to know are as follows. So you need to know these forms.
you know, these are also on the common derivatives and integrals notes. Uh, I said notes, but common integrals um, handout that you can get on Canvas. Right? So here, here's what they are. So there's cases. So if I write um, uh, the term, and then I should be able to write the uh, form of the decomposition. All right. So if you have um, what we call a linear factor, actually, how do I want to do this? Hold on. I'm going to break this up actually sorry I want a third third one here so we're gonna have like the name of the term and then we're gonna have like an example and then we're going to have um, you know the decomposition So what we're gonna have is um, just what we'll call linear factors. Now, what are linear factors? So an example of a linear factor would be something like this, like um, x plus two, or even five x plus two, that's an example. Now, how are they gonna decompose? Uh, well, here's how you would see it. So if you had like, you know, three over x plus two, x minus five, then the decomposition would be a over x plus two, b over x minus five. Now that's actually two linear factors, right? But um, the x plus two and the x minus five are two linear factors. But um, this is the kind of linear factor that you're talking about and there was just a example. All right. Now, if you have a, what we call repeated factor or repeated linear factor. Now a repeated linear factor might be like this, like X minus three squared. Okay. Then you have to do it slightly different. So like if I had uh, 4 over x minus 3 squared, then the way it would break apart would not be the way it is um, on the previous example. What you have to do is it would be a constant over x minus 3, that's the factor, but then you would have to have another constant over the factor to the second power, right? And whatever this power is here, that's how many terms you have to have down here. So like if it was a, if it was third degree, you would have to have it three times. So like um, if this was three, then you would have to have three terms and it would be first, second and third powers, right? Because right now there's a first and second Okay, so we got linear and we got repeated linear, and then what you're going to have what they call uh, irreducible or unfactorable quadratic. So that's something like this x squared plus 4. And when you have that, um, here I'll do an example. So we're gonna have like um, uh, one over, let's say x plus two, that's linear, and then we have our irreducible quadratic, right? So let me just, um, that's linear, and then that's uh, the quadratic that we're actually talking about right here. So the form is this. So the linear factor we already know how to handle. The linear factor would just be constant over x plus two. 
right? That's what we saw in the first example. The quadratic, what you have to do is, it's not repeated like the previous one, it's just one term, but on top you have to go bx plus c. It's a generic linear term on top, okay? And those are basically the forms that you need. Um, we can go into more detail later on. Um, but these are the basic forms that you need to know how to handle. So um, those examples had more than just one factor in each example for the most part. Well, the first and third one did. So let's just um, make sure we're on the same page here. Example, let's just write the form of decomposition. So if I go like one over like x minus two, x plus three, x plus seven, right? Then how would that decompose? Well, you would just go, that's linear, that's linear, that's linear. That's just a bunch of linear factors. So how would it break apart? You would just go constant over the first one constant over the second one, constant over the third one, just like that. And that's true as long as the top here is lower degree than the bottom. So like even if I change it to like this, like um, 3x plus 2, nothing changes, right? Nothing on the right changes based on that. That's still the correct decomposition. We weren't looking at the numerator really at all, okay? Now, what would it happen if I had like this? What if I have uh, four over x minus four squared x plus three? How would that go? Well, you'd have to say this is repeated linear and then this is just linear. So the form would be for a repeated linear factor Actually, I'm gonna change that to a three so I can show you because we we I mentioned it, but we didn't do a three, three. Still repeated linear. Um, so what you'd have to do for a repeated linear factor is this. So you'd have constant over the factor, and then another constant over the factor to the second power, and because it's third degree, you'd have to have a third one to the third power. So you have to count up. So if it was x minus four to the 10th power, you'd have to have a over x minus four, b over x minus four squared, c over x minus four cubed, and then to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh, to the eighth, to the ninth, to the 10th, okay? You'd never see that in a real problem, but that, that would be the correct form. So you have to do that for the repeated ones, and then the one that's just a regular linear factor, just like that. Okay, now let's do one more. Um, something that confuses people when they're first learning this is that uh, sometimes like just an X is confusing to people. So like that. But that should not be confusing. It's just a linear factor and this is quadratic, irreducible or unfactorable quadratic, but quadratic. And then we got, uh, you would just do a over x, bx plus c over x squared plus nine. Okay, now what you're gonna see is stuff that needs to be factored. First, some need to be factored first. So as an example of that, like if I have a four over, oops, like if I have four over, um, let's just say like x squared plus five x plus six, right? What you have to do is you have to factor the denominator here, 
which you have to do that however you factor. So x plus two, x plus three in this case. And then after you factor the denominator, now you can write the decomposition a over x plus two, b over x plus three. All right. And so factoring can be a pain, um, but you know, that's how you do it. And um, you know, another example, and then I probably, maybe that'll be enough examples. So like if I have um, four X squared plus, um, let's see, four, uh, I think, Will this work? 4x squared plus 4x plus 4? Is that a... Um... No, that's not. Hold on. I was trying to make it a perfect square. Um, 2x plus 2 would be... I think, that'd be... I think that's right. Um, so if you were factoring this, right, again, you'd factor, because that's the right way. You'd have uh, 3 over, and if I did this right, what I was trying to make it do was 2x plus 2 quantity squared. Right? 2x squared is 4x squared. 2 squared is 4. 2x times 2 is 4x. Double it, and you get 8. Yeah, that's right. So you would have to factor it, and then you would realize that this was a repeated factor. So you would have to use the form for a repeated factor, right? Um, no mystery involved. Okay, um, I think that's enough examples of that for now. Um, let's actually, uh, let's actually try to do one. So, uh, this is the first one that you have in the homework. Well, the first one that came up for me. So, we've got the integral of 5x plus 1 over 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 uh, dx. All right, now we need to perform the decomposition first, and then we're actually gonna integrate it. So I'm gonna probably just kind of split this paper into halves here, and we'll try to do the decomposition. So here's what we're gonna have. So I've got, um, 5x plus 1 over 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. All right, now you've got to, you've got to factor that denominator, okay? Um, why won't you make a straight line? Come on. Oh, because the other one's not a straight line. Uh, so you've got to factor this denominator. Now, if you factor it by hand, it's a little bit tedious, but you could do it. So I would have to say, um, the six and the negative three is negative 18. Then I've got seven. Um, what multiplies to negative 18 and adds up to seven? So I, I'm gonna go nine and two, and I guess the two needs to be negative in order to make that happen. So you factor this, feel free to use a computer. So I got six x squared plus nine x minus 2x minus 3. Then I'm going to group these two together and these two together. Factor out what I can. So on the first two I can factor out 3x and I'll be left with 2x plus 3. On the other I can factor out just a negative and I'll have 2x plus 3 which tells me I have 5x plus 1 over, looks like, 3x minus 1, 2x plus 3. Okay, now I could have done that a million times faster just by typing in, just by typing this in to Wolfram Alpha and had it factor it for me and I would have been down here in one step. Okay, um, not like the whole problem, just just that denominator to have it factor it for me, okay? So what that's telling me is that I've got two linear factors here, right? This is just linear and this is just linear. So I know that my integral is gonna split up into a over three x minus one plus b over two uh, x plus three. 
I just need to figure out what the A and the B are. That's what we haven't done yet, which is where all the work is really. So, you know, sorry. Um, but that's where, that's what we're gonna do now, okay? So what you have now is this. So we have, uh, what do we have? This thing, 5x plus one over 3x minus one, 2x plus three is equal to a over 3x minus 1 plus b over 2x plus 3. That's the form of the decomposition. So we're, we're starting to do it now. So this is the, uh, you know, write the form of the decomposition. Right? Now the next thing you're always going to do is you're going to clear out those fractions by whatever this is right here, the original denominator, you're gonna multiply everything by that to uh, hopefully clear out all the denominators. Well, not hopefully, it will. Multiply both sides by, uh, in this case, 3x minus one, 2x plus three. So what what's gonna happen is um, man, I'm gonna have to, oh no, I can copy paste. I'm on a computer. Uh, I was gonna say I could, I didn't copy it though, duplicate. I can write it down here, like that. Split this up. Put the plus sign. Um, Take the whole thing, slide it over. Okay, yeah, good, 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 good. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I'm going to multiply both sides by that 3x minus one, like I said, 3x minus one, uh, 2x plus three. I do it there, but then here as well, 3x minus one, 2x plus three, and here as well, 3x minus one, 2x plus three. All right, now, then what you need to do is just cancel everything that cancels. So like on the left hand side, cancel, 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 cancel. On the right hand side, not as much cancels. The 3x minus one cancels with the 3x minus one. The 2x plus three cancels with the 2x plus three. So what you're left with is on the left, just 5x plus one and on the right, a 2x plus 3 plus b 3x minus 1. Okay? And what we're trying to do now is we want to find the a and the b. So we want to find a and b. That's not a step, that's just what we want to do. How are you going to do it? So there are multiple methods for what is the easiest way to find the A and the B. The easiest one is the one I'm gonna show you here. It, in the best case, is much faster than other methods, and in the worst case, is around the same. It's never really much slower, and it's sometimes much faster, and that's why we do it, okay? So we wanna find the A and the B. So the key here is this idea. So here's the idea. This equation must be true, must be true for all x values, right? It's an equation that's always true. So for any x value. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're purposefully going to pick x values to plug in that are going to make some things zero, okay? So if, since we have two unknowns, right, that the a and the b are what we don't know, two unknown values a and b, we need two equations. So choose two x values to plug in 
and we'll have two equations. All right, what x values are you gonna plug in? We choose them specifically to make things zero. So choose them, zero out um, as many coefficients as possible. So I'll just say as much as possible. Zero out as much as possible. So what are we gonna choose? Let me see. My first one's gonna be x equals, let's look. So I'm looking right here and I see that if I plug in x equals one third, right? If I put in a one third right there, I'm gonna have one third minus one. And that's gonna be zero and then the b will be gone. So that's my first one, x equals one third. This is actually a pretty difficult problem for our first one, so I apologize, but it's just what Newton Alta gave me first, so you need to be prepared for that too. So put in x equals one third. So you put x equals one third in for every x value in the entire problem. So you have to go, uh, so we're starting over here. So five, one third, plus one equals a two times one third plus three plus b three times one third minus one. Okay, and the whole point of doing this is that this is all zero, right? Three times a third is one, one minus one is zero. So this whole thing's gone. So all we've got left now is five times a third plus one, so that's five thirds plus one equals a, and then two times one third, is, that's two thirds plus three. All right. So we can solve for a. Now I'm gonna use a calculator here. My calculator does fractions. Wolfram Alpha does fractions. Other calculators do fractions. Um, my calculator doesn't do fractions, why not? I mean, I know, I mean, okay, hold on. Come on now. Okay, I think that's right. No, that's not right. do it I don't understand it should do it oh well is what it is I guess so anyway I'm just back here all right what was it sorry five thirds plus one two and two point six six so that's um, okay oh what am I doing anyway I can just add these in my head sorry back back to work Eight thirds, <laughs> sorry, plus uh, equals over here. We got three plus two thirds. Three is nine thirds. Nine thirds and two thirds is eleven thirds. So eleven thirds. Uh, now, if you're trying to solve for a, right, you would just have. Um, well, I guess I'll go down and not sideways. Um, you would just multiply by three over eleven. Multiply by three over eleven. And what you'll end up with is, what will we end up with? Eight over 11 equals A. And we got one of the constants, okay? So that was the goal. Now we need another X value. How do I know I need another X value? Remember what I said up here. If you have two equations, right? You have two things you need to find. You need two equations. So we need to plug in two x values, right? Two, two, two. If it was three, it'd be three, three, three. So um, what do we plug in now? Again, same idea. We want to zero out as much as possible here. So what would I plug in right here to zero out um, this term? So if I plugged in negative three over two, negative three over two, let's try it. So if I plug in negative three over two, I'm gonna have five, 
negative three over two plus one equals a uh, two times negative three over two plus three plus b uh, three times negative three over two minus one. Hopefully I wrote that right. So we'll work this out. So I have negative 15 over two plus one equals a, oh not really, because this is zero, so that's gone. So this is all just zero. Uh, plus, here I've got um, b and then three times negative three over two is negative nine over two minus one. So overall, what do I get? So negative 15 over two plus one, one is two over two, so that's negative 13 over two equals, on the other side, b times negative nine over two minus one. So minus one is minus two over two, so that's negative 11 over two, like that. You're trying to solve for b, so just multiply by negative two over 11, negative two over 11, and we get b equals, the twos are gonna cancel, uh, they're both negative, so it'll be positive. So we're just gonna get 13 over 11, I think, if I did that right. Okay, so I've got the a and the b. Now, um, this you definitely can check on Wolfram Alpha. Um, so like this whole thing you could do. So uh, if I take this, 5x plus one, if you type the whole thing in, it'll be able to do it. 5x plus one over, be careful how you write this in the denominator. Like you might need two sets of parentheses. Um, what is it, three x minus one. 3x minus 1, parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses, in there. Uh, 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3, close parentheses. And um, I might have to write partial fractions, but I'll see what it does. No, there it is. So you can look right here and you see the eight, uh, I can't write there, but you see the eight on top and the 11 on the bottom, that's the eight over 11 constant. And then the other one is 13 over 11, so you see the 13 over 11 constant, okay? And it said partial fraction expansion. If it didn't give you that, you couldn't find it, you would just type this in and type partial fractions. and then it would know exactly what you were trying to do, right? And it does do this where if it's a fract if it's an actual fraction for the constant, like a is eight over 11, then it does put the bottom part um, on the bottom. So just, um, you know, just be aware of that. Okay, let's uh, come back to, nope, that's not what I wanted. Come back here, all right. So, ooh, long one. So you have the constants. Great, what do we do with them? Well, let's come back up to the problem because the whole reason why I left this space here was to kind of illustrate the idea that the partial fractions was hard, but everything else after that is actually easy. So you have your integral here, right? The original integral splits up. So you split it up into the integral of a, what's a? A was eight over 11 or the eight over 11? So we have integral eight over 11, three x minus one dx, and you split it into another integral, which was uh, 13 over 11, I believe, and then two x plus three dx. Those are your two integrals. Well, guess what? These are easy integrals because you can take the eight over 11 out And you can take the 13 over 11 out. And these two, when it's line, linear factors, you just get natural logs. So the answer here, you could formally do a u substitution, 
but um, basically what's going to happen here is you're just going to get um, you're going to get a natural log of absolute value 3x minus 1 and the effect of this 3 here is going to be a times 1 third and then for the other one it's going to be the same deal where you've got a 13 over 11 and you're going to get a natural log 2x plus 3 absolute value and the effect of the 2 and the 3 uh, the 2 is going to give you a 1 half okay so just be aware of what that 3 does in your answer and what that 2 does in your answer and then that way um, you don't have to formally do any kind of u substitution so what would I get for my answer here I would just go 8 over 33 ln 3x minus 1 plus 13 over 22 ln absolute value 2x plus 3 and I need a plus C and that would be my answer come on okay all right so I mean that's you know slow but um, there we go so do you see that the work for actually doing the integral is pretty short all of the work is in the partial fraction decomposition and that's why when people will get down here to the bottom and they have their constants they feel like they're done but you're not done right they were asking you to do this integral so if you didn't solve the integral you're not done um, okay we need to see more of course uh, we will be significantly faster at these in the future uh, especially since I'm sure we got some easier one coming uh, yeah here's an easier one two x plus e feels confusing actually the the fact that we got these e's here is is pretty weird honestly but is what it is okay and actually this one was a definite integral but I'm I'm not doing it as a definite integral we're just gonna do it all right so again um, let's just leave a little space up there that much space should be plenty and uh, let's do the partial fraction decomposition down here so I need 2x plus e over x plus e x plus 2e to decompose into something well what's the decomposition well you just identify this as linear and linear so it's just a over x plus e plus b over x plus 2e very easy to write okay from there remember what to do we basically need to take this and that needs to be multiplied over to the other side that's not how I said it the first time but you're basically gonna move it over here right like that so what we're gonna end up is uh, 2x plus e equals um, I'm gonna write this one more time and then I'm gonna to suggest to you that you get comfortable with writing less so I'm just writing this all out all right so we end up here now what cancels here you should be able to see the x plus e the x plus e the x plus 2e x plus 2e and you've got um, write it down here 2x plus e equals a parentheses x plus 2e plus b x plus e All right now you can jump down here you can go from here to here without too much trouble just by realizing that when you multiply these two by this one for example the x plus e cancels so you would be left with you would have been left with just um, this one and this one right um, and the opposite for the other one but uh, if you write it out you'll make fewer mistakes
So, you know, you decide how to do it. Okay, so we're here. Now again, this is two constants that we're looking for. So we need to plug in two x values, right? Two constants, two x values. Two x values to plug in. Sorry. Um, two x values. What x values? Remember, you pick them to zero stuff out. So what's going to zero out that zero out that x plus e? How about x equals just negative e, right? Easy. So you put that in. You get two negative e plus e equals a negative e plus two e. And then the B is gone, right? Because we're zeroing that out. So I'll say B zero. So what we got? We got two times negative E, which is negative two E plus E. So that's negative E on the left. On the right, we got A and negative E plus two E is E. Divide both sides by E, you get A equals minus one. Easy. What about the other one? What is going to zero out this, oops. What is gonna zero out the x plus two e? How about negative two e, right? So you're gonna get this, you're gonna get um, two negative two e plus e equals a negative two e plus two e plus b, negative 2e plus e. What do we get? We got uh, negative 4e plus e, so that's negative 3e there. Uh, of course, this is zero. And then b, and it looks like negative e. So we have negative 3e equals negative e b. Divide both sides by negative e, we're gonna get b is three just like that okay so you got your you've got your constants negative one and positive three so you come back up here and we should be able to do this so this is going to be the integral of and you have to get the constants in the right order by the way right so what was a a was negative one so negative one over x plus e plus, and the other one was three, three over x plus two e dx. Now, again, this is not gonna be that hard because you're gonna write this as negative integral one over x plus e dx plus three integral one over x plus two e dx. So the first one's gonna be negative ln x plus e plus three ln absolute value x plus two e plus c. And there you go. So the actual integral is pretty easy. The um, partial fraction decomposition was all of the lines of work. All right. All right, let's do one that is not partial fractions. Instead, it's long division. I keep getting notifications of Twitch streamers going live. But I can't watch you guys play video games. I'm busy. All right. Long division. So this is what we're talking about. Um, if the numerator is higher degree than the denominator, you can't just do partial fractions, okay? Um, if top is same or higher degree, uh, you must divide 
no partial fractions in that case. Now, after you divide, maybe you still have partial fractions to do on the result, but not on the original thing here. Okay, so we gotta do long division. So how does it work? Gotta remember. Now, hopefully the numbers here will be nicer, but uh, you know, based on based on Newton Alta, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a hundred percent sure. All right, let's try it. So, what do you do? What do you multiply the x by to get negative nine x squared? Negative nine x. So negative nine x times this is going to be negative nine x squared, and then. Um, negative 9x times 9 is negative 81x. Okay, parentheses, subtract, result. So, of course the first one comes up 0. The next one is negative 82x plus 81x. Negative 82 plus 81 is negative 1. So this is just negative x. And then after you do that, what you want to do is any extra terms, you just bring them down. Okay, so just bring that down. So then you need to say, well, what do you multiply by x plus 9 to get negative x? And the answer is negative 1. So negative 1 times x is going to be negative x. Negative 1 times 9 is going to be negative 9. Subtract. Uh, negative x plus x is 0, of course. Negative 18 plus 9 is negative 9. All right. So when we get this constant here, that's lower degree than the x plus 9. So this is my remainder. So what have we learned? Well, what we learned was this. I learned that the original integral, which I'm going to write again, is actually equal to the integral of uh, our quotient plus remainder. So the quotient is negative 9x minus 1, and then you have minus 9 over the original x plus 9 dx. So just to hopefully highlight this and you can see what's what, this, oops, no. This is your quotient, and it's right here. Your remainder goes on top, and your original denominator ends up there, below the remainder. So that's where the three pieces go in your answer. Um, from there, we should just be able to integrate, though. So you're just going to integrate like normal. So negative 9x is going to be negative 9x squared over 2, power rule. The negative 1, antiderivative is negative x. Um, the last one, the third one, is another um, natural log. So minus 9 ln absolute value x plus 9 plus c. Done. Okay, so that's why you do long division, and then your result is just whatever it is. So you integrate, you get what you get, done. I'm not going to do another one of those. They're all, they all look the same here. I'm trying to get to a more complicated trig substitution for you guys. No, not trig substitution. Um, there are problems, by the way, I should say this. There are absolutely problems that are trig substitution and partial fractions. You know, they just get long. All right. What we haven't done in an hour and 10 minutes is we have not done a definite integral. So this is a definite integration with partial fractions, of course. So. We're going to go 3 to 4, x minus 14 over x plus 4, x minus 2, dx. All right, so 
what are we going to do? Well, basically, you just ignore... Just ignore the limits of integration, basically, until the end. All right, so don't worry about them. Just this is a partial fractions problem. That's how you should think of it. So it's a partial fractions problem. So we got uh, x minus 14 over x plus 4, x minus 2. So you go linear factor, linear factor. We've seen a lot of linear factors now. We're gonna have to do more that aren't linear. So we're not close to done with this. But um, there's your form. Then you're going to uh, you know, multiply to get rid of the denominator. I'm gonna write it how I would write it now so you can see how much work I would do. So I would say A, and then I would say when I multiply this by the first term, the x plus four is gonna cancel, but the x minus two will not. That's how I would do it. And then I would say if I take the x plus four x minus two times this term, it's gonna be, I'm gonna have the b, the x minus two cancels and it's the x plus four that does not. So I would go from, well, I would write what I wrote, okay? Now from there, we got two constants, so choose two x values. Should be easy to see which ones to pick. Two is gonna be the first one. So I'm gonna get two minus 14 on the left. A, two minus two, B, two plus four. So I have negative 12 equals zero plus 6b, b equals negative 2. Now, I do have a comment here about these. Um, when you're solving these, if you get integers like b equals negative 2, that's a good sign that you're doing stuff right. If you get relatively small fractions, now what's relatively small? Like um, the ones up here, like the 8 over 11, 13 over 11, those are fine. Um, if you start to get fractions that are like nuts, like you get like, oh, it's uh, 17 over 362, that's a sign that you've gone wrong, okay? So expect the numbers to be relatively simple. That doesn't mean no fractions, but they shouldn't be getting bigger. Like you shouldn't find A as an integer, B as a fraction, C is like, completely nuts that tells you something's wrong okay back to this so we have b we need the other one so we're gonna pick what should we pick hopefully you can see minus 4 is what to pick so you get minus 4 minus 14 equals a minus 4 minus 2 plus b minus 4 plus 4 negative 18 equals a times negative 6 plus zero. Divide both sides by negative six, we get a is three positive. Okay, easy, easy. So we get our integral three to four of, and I'm just gonna put the stuff in. So we have, we know we have a over x plus four and a is three. So three over x plus four. And then b is negative two, so we have minus two over x minus two, dx, All right? Now, once you have it done, it's just an integral. So we just need, it's a definite integral, so we find the antiderivative. So three ln absolute value x plus four minus two ln absolute value x minus two from three to four. So you just work it out. Put in the four, we get three ln eight minus two ln, we're putting in the four, two, minus, then you put in the three, we have three ln seven minus two ln one.
Nope. I'm just trying to move this a little bit. And it is resisting. Okay. Um, so what you can do here is not too much. Um, LN1 is zero. So um, you can. I would probably just write it this way, honestly. I would just probably write 3LN8 minus 3LN7 minus 2LN2. And I don't know why I changed the order because two of them had three. And there are log rules that you can apply to simplify that, but um, I didn't. All right. Wait, what did they do? Oh, shoot. Yeah, so um, I do, actually I do want to mention that a little bit here. So let me take that answer and just, because uh, the book, it's multiple choice. So it was 3LN8 minus 3LN7 minus 2LN2, right? So this is answer is actually not on your, um, not on the answer list. So like what you'd have to do is something like this. So you could say three LN eight, but eight is two to the three minus three LN seven minus two LN two. Then you can use a log rule that says that power, the three can come out front. So you'd have nine LN two minus three LN seven minus two LN two and then you've got this one and this one, which are the same base. So you can say, not base, the same argument. So 9LN2 minus 2LN2 is 7LN2 minus 3LN7. And so this is the one that's actually on the list. Now, be careful though, because this one is almost on the list. It's just on the list with like a different sign. So you have to be careful that you're applying your log rule right and, and pay careful attention to the pluses and minuses. So what is this right here? This is, this is just to make the answer look like Newton. That's how they did it. All right. Um, now, again, we have to do at least um, a couple more because we have not done any where the partial fractions are tricky and it is possible that I was nice to you, but on the other hand, that doesn't sound like me. I mean, I didn't pick the questions, they picked the questions, but I could have left off a complete topic. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm talking about. All right. Integral 3x plus 1 over. It's going to blow your mind. It's not going to blow your mind. Uh, x squared plus 2, x plus 3, dx. All right. Easy, right? Um, again, we're going to leave some space probably that much space to do the integral. It's still gonna be uh, some amount of work for the integral, uh, more work than before. All right, so you gotta remember the form. What's the form here? This is not linear anymore. This is the uh, quadratic, right? Irreducible quadratic, and this is linear. So you've got like an ax plus b over x squared plus two, and then you've got a c over x plus three. Okay, yeah, that's what you got. Um, then what we're gonna do is, of course, we're gonna multiply everything by x squared plus two, x plus three. And you wanna be careful. I'm actually gonna write this out on another line Um, actually, not quite. 
on on the left it's easy right so I'm just gonna write the result x plus 1 equals um, on the right I'm gonna be a little more careful so I'm just uh, I'm just writing this in that's the thing we're multiplying by okay should have used a different color I did not so like this right here you've got it right here and you've got it right here so I, I multiplied that over to the other side now canceling here I think is going to be about the same uh, x squared plus 2 x squared plus 2 x plus 3 x plus 3 uh, and you end up with 3x plus 1 equals parentheses ax plus b x plus 3 plus c x squared plus 2. Now this is a little bit different than what we've seen before, right? Uh, we've got three constants and two of them are over here together and that makes it harder to find the constants but you want to keep in mind what you know. What you know is that uh, we have three unknowns now which should tell you we need three equations three equations needs three or three equations can find three unknowns three equations you need to plug in three x values right so you plug in three x values now you still pick them like before but you're not going to be able to zero stuff out as well as you could before so try to do it but we'll come into trouble pretty quick so the first x value I can see to plug in is going to make this 0. That would be minus 3, right? So plug in minus 3. So you get 3 minus 3 plus 1 equals a minus 3 plus b minus 3 plus 3 plus c minus 3 parentheses squared plus 2. Work all this out. You get negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8 the whole point of doing this is that this is going to be 0 so this whole thing is 0 and then you get C and negative 3 squared is 9 9 plus 2 is 11 alright so I get really all these numbers just kinda of suck alright so uh, you can find C right C is going to be negative 8 over 11, unfortunately. There it is. If I did that right, let me just double check. Negative 8, right? Yeah. And that's 9. 9 and 2. All right. This is what it is. Okay. So we have C. Now, there's nothing else that you can zero out that same way. Um, so if you are kind of stuck... Uh, if you don't know what to plug in, try 0. Unless you already tried 0, then you can't. Right? So try x equals 0. Technically, you could use anything, but try 0. Why 0? Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to 0 out something at least. So we're going back up to the purple equation. So we got 3, 0, plus 1 equals a times 0 plus b, 0 plus 3. So do you see what the 0 did? It's going to 0 out the a. That's something, at least. Uh, plus c, 0 squared plus 2. It's also easy to work out the numbers. So what do we get? On the left, we get 1. Then we have 0a, which is 0. So we have b times 3 plus C times 2 okay now this is the first time this has happened we've got two variables here right and that's not as nice right two variables sad face but we already know C so you can still find the B from this So you can find B by plugging in C. So
So C is negative 8 over 11. So we have uh, 1 equals B times 3 plus C. Oh, no, what's C? C is negative 8 over 11. Right? Now you can find B. So what are we going to have? Um, 1 equals 3B, okay, uh, minus 16 over 11. So if you're trying to find B, you would have 1 plus 16 over 11 equals 3B. So 3B is um, 27 over 11. And so B is 27 over 33, which 3 goes into both of those, you get 9 over 11. Now we got B. Again, fractions, but they're not crazy fractions, right? They're not like thousands or something. They're just fractions. Okay, so we got we got them. Now let's scroll scroll up. Look at the purple equation. Now, what else can we zero out? If you look at it, three x plus one, ax plus b. There's nothing else that's easy to plug in. Well, there's nothing else that will zero something out. When you run out of things that will zero something out, you just have to pick an x value. So just pick an x value that's easy to plug in. So usually, you know, you try zero first. If, if you can't plug in zero, try a one, try a two, that kind of thing. You could plug in negative numbers, but I hate working out negative numbers, so I would I would rather plug in positive two than negative one, if that makes sense. So choose a third x value. Um, try x equals one, just because it's easy. All right. So we have x equals one. What is that going to give us? So we got to be able to see it. Um, all right. So I think I can tell from there what it was. 3 times 1 plus 1 equals 3. A times 1 plus B. Parentheses. 1 plus 3 plus C. 1 squared plus 2. Hopefully I plugged that in correctly. I think so. See what we get. So on the left, we have 4. On the right, I've got 3. Wait, is that 3? Wait, how is that 3? Hold on. Wait. 3a plus b? No, that's wrong. What am I doing? Hold on. Oh, okay. I plugged... Okay, I, I, that looks weird. I don't, I don't know what I wrote right here. That looks wrong. All right, it should be... I'm just trying to plug in one, so it should be um, A times one plus B parentheses one plus three. Is that right? I think that's right. Okay, hopefully that's right. Hold on, let me look. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so what you get is parentheses a plus b times 4 plus c, 1 plus 3 is, or 1 plus 2 is 3. So I've got, make sure you, careful how you work this out. You have to distribute that 4. So it's going to be 4a plus 4b plus 3c. Now you already know two of them though, right? We already know that uh, B is 9 over 11 and C is something, negative 8 over 11. So you plug those in. 4 equals 4A plus 4, negative 8 over 11, plus 3, 9 over 11. So we got 4 equals 4a plus, actually minus, minus 32 over 11 plus 27 over 11. So 4 is 4a minus 5 over 11. 
So 4 plus 5 over 11 is 4a. Okay. 44, 49 over 11 equals 4a. Is that right? Things look bad, guys. A is going to be 49 over 44. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying, like, the bigger the fractions get, the more worried I am that it's not working out. Okay, so let me just double check this. Because you, remember, you can always go back to Wolfram Alpha. Um, so I'm going to write this down real quick to avoid the, uh, as you know, switching back and forth thing that I do a lot. 3x plus 1 x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right. Let's hope for the best. Delete all this. All right, we got numerator, 3x plus 1. Denominator, parentheses, parentheses, x squared plus 2, parentheses, parentheses, x plus 3 parentheses parentheses and I could ask for partial fractions but it'll oops there's a mistake there isn't there all right it'll pretty much know that I want that if I just wait a second come on where where are you where are you making a liar out of me. It will not know. All right. Okay, let's look. Oh, there's a mistake. There is a mistake. Look, we made a mistake. Because I know there's a mistake because I can see the eight over 11 and it should be positive. So 8 over 11, 9 over 11, and then, oh, negative 8 over 11. Okay, so what is this? Let me just write this, and we'll fix it. So 8x plus 9, and then... All right, so two of them are right, one of them's wrong. Let's see how that happened. Okay, so the C is negative 8 over 11, and that's right. The B is 9 over 11, and that's also right. So the only one that's wrong is the last one that we did. So uh, we got to redo this. Delete. Delete. All right. Delete. Okay, so we gotta we gotta figure this out. So um, let me just write this down. We had three uh, x plus one. I'm just gonna write it down. Three x plus one equals a x plus b x plus three plus c. x squared plus 2. Alright, so that's before we plug in a 1. So let's plug in a 1. And we'll work out as much as we can. So 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. That's right. Plug in a 1, you get a plus b. We already did that. 1 plus 3 is 4. I feel like we are doing exactly what we did before. Plus c, 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3c. Is that what we had last time? I feel like that is exactly what we had last time. All right, but 4a plus 4b plus 3c. So 4a we don't know. B we do know because the b is, I believe, 9 over 11. Oh, did I put those in backwards? I think I put them in backwards. All right. Okay, I think I just switched the 8 and the 11. Um, maybe I'm wrong. 
I mean, I switched the eight and the nine. So this is four times nine is 36 over 11. And then we have negative 24 over 11. So four is, that should be plus, four um, a and then minus 12 over 11. So you add that over to the other side, you get four plus 12 over 11. So 44 plus 12 is 56 over 11, I believe. And then you divide by four and then 56 over four, wait, what's that? Is that right? Four times fourteen. It's not. That's not right, though. I'm slowly losing my ability to do math. Fifty-six over forty-four. What is that? Um, so that is twenty-eight over twenty-two. Then two goes into both of those. That's fourteen over eleven, and that's wrong. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Okay, you know what? Um, there is a mistake somewhere in here, and I'm not fixing it. Okay. Mistake somewhere. Okay, um, but this is a very long lecture already. So let me just double check these constants here. So what are they? Let's look. They're eight over eleven positive, nine over eleven positive, and then negative eight over eleven. So this was supposed to be eight over eleven was what a was supposed to be. So somehow. This is correct, okay? I'm just gonna take it and just continue on. There's just a, I'm just not seeing it for some reason. So um, let's do what we're gonna do here. So you split this up, you've got your constants, right? And uh, according to the breakdown, the way this breaks apart is you've got the integral of a over b, which was um, eight over 11 was a, 9 over 11, so 8 over 11x, over x squared plus 2 dx, or no, not dx yet. And then plus c, c was negative 8 over 11, over x plus 3. All right, so that's what your partial fraction decomposition got you. Now, what you have to do, though, is this one actually needs to be split apart. So you actually need the integral of uh, essentially eight over 11 X over X squared plus two DX. That's one of them. Nine over 11 over X squared plus two DX. That's another integral. And then negative eight over 11 over X plus three dx. So you actually have three integrals to do here. So even though you hit like this ax plus b1, when you integrate it, you don't integrate it that way. You split it up into two. So even though there's two terms here, here, there's two terms here, there's actually three once you split up the one on the left. And then you have to integrate them with whatever the appropriate technique is. So I'll take you take the constants out um, actually, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to be sneaky. So I left the 2x there. Just 
just rewriting this one. All right, and then each of these you can integrate. Now you integrate them using an appropriate technique. So the one on the left is going to be a natural log the way we've seen several of these. All right. Now the one in the middle is actually an inverse tangent. So you have to remember what the formula is for an inverse tangent, right? Um, so you go to your cheat sheet or whatever, you look up the integrals for um, for the that give you the inverse tangent. What you're going to see is somewhere. I'm going to write it. Where can I write it? That's out of the way. I don't. I didn't leave room. Yeah, I'll write it right here. Um, so you know this one, right? X squared plus a squared dx is the is one over a tan inverse x over a plus c, right? So you know this one. So with a two here, that's actually a little bit tricky. Normally that's a perfect square, but it's not this time. So it's nine over 11 and then the a is actually root two. So it's one over root two tan inverse x over root two is gonna be that, um, that integral. So you have to do that correctly, right? It's not just a natural log. Now the last one, the reason I split it up the way I did was the numerator is now the derivative of the denominator. And that's why it was eight over 11, but I only took out a four over 11. So I could leave the two in. And the reason for that is now in the two things that I circled there, the derivative of x squared plus two is two x. That means the top is the derivative of the denominator, which means I can use a u substitution where the bottom is u, and then it'll become a natural log. So you can do that more carefully for sure, but these are the way that those would integrate. And I'm done. Okay, what are we, 142, long lecture. All right, I'm gonna look at the homework one more time, and I believe I'm going to find one more, because there's one thing, believe it or not, that we have yet to see. Uh, I just looked at a problem, and I almost said a swear word, guys. I'm not going to tell you which swear word though, you have to guess. It was a bad one though. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Alright, so here's, here's our last one because we've been doing this literally forever. I was born and then I did partial fraction decompositions. Alright, 2x plus 7 over x minus 1 squared, uh, you see why we're doing this one? x plus one dx. All right, so here we go. Again, leave a little bit of room for the actual integral, which is, you know, not the main point, but is what it is. So we got um, two x minus plus seven over x minus one squared x plus one and that equals well you got to remember the decompositions but this time we have a repeated one and a linear one so these work out differently than before right we have an a over x minus one plus b over x minus one squared right we got to handle the repeated linear factor correctly And then the third one is just a regular linear factor. So you get that. Now, we know to clear the denominator here. I'm going to leave some space on each of these so I can show you what happens. Because these are a little bit un 
unusual compared to the others. All right, so we know we're multiplying by this thing, right, on both sides. So that's, that's why I don't have it on the next line. So I'm gonna write it on every term. Okay, so we know we get to here. Now be careful the way this cancels because this is where this is where it gets a little tricky. So on the third term, you have the x plus one cancel with the x plus one. That's normal. On the middle term, you've got x minus one squared, x minus one squared, that cancels like normal. But on this first one, look at this. There's only one down there, only one x minus one, but on top there are two. Two of them, only one. So when you cancel, you cancel the x minus one, but only with one of them in the numerator. So when you write your answer, you get two x plus seven equals a x minus one x plus one plus b x plus one plus c x minus one squared. And, and so this kind of form here is different than what we've seen before for these partial fraction decompositions. Now, the logic is still the same. You're still gonna say, we've got, um, what do we have? We still have three unknowns, right, A, B, C. That means we need three equations. That means we need three x values to plug in. And we still pick them the same way. You pick them, if you can, to zero stuff out. So we're gonna try, um, what? I guess we need plus and minus one are the ones that'll do it, right? So let's try this, let's try x equals one, see what happens. We're gonna get two times one plus seven. Let's hope that I regained my powers of algebra here, unlike the previous problem, although I think it is mostly down to the fact that I was copying something down wrong and I am blind and cannot see it. All right, so plug in one everywhere. What do we get? On the left, nine. On the right, well, let's see, uh, zero, right? Because of the one minus one. And over here on the third one, zero, because of the one minus one. So what do I got? I just have two B, don't I? B is nine over two. So it starts out, it's not that bad. Then we're gonna try x equals negative one. So we got two negative one plus seven equals a negative one minus one, negative one plus one, plus b negative one plus one, plus c negative one minus one squared. So work this out. You have seven minus two is five. This one, zero again, right? Because you still have a minus one plus one there. And then this one's zero again, not again for the first time. And then the last one, minus one minus one is minus two. Minus two squared is four. So we actually get four C, looks like. So C is five over four. All right, so far so good. We need a third x value, right? That's why it's important to write down, you know, how many you need so you know what to do next. So we need one more x value. What can I pick? I picked all the easy ones, right? So once you picked all the easy ones, you just pick another one. It doesn't matter what I pick. I could pick zero, I could pick two, I could pick whatever I want. Uh, I'm gonna pick two. Why two and not zero? I don't know. Zero works, pick pick what you want. All right, now the key is, can I see what I'm doing so I don't screw this up again? All right, um, so what we what was a uh, way saying though? I, I was saying, um, you know, choose any X for the third. All right, I picked two. So I have two, two plus seven, uh, there is a reason why I'm picking two. The reason I'm picking two is I'm hoping to avoid negative numbers. 
So if I put in a zero, I know I'm gonna get some negatives and I think this will avoid that, right? Cause like this, like two minus one, that would have been zero minus one if I picked a zero. All right, B two plus one, C two minus one, work this all out. We have uh, four plus seven is 11, A one, three, B, three, C, one. All right, so what I have, I have 11 equals 3A plus 3B plus C, and I know B and C, so let's put them in. 11 equals 3A plus 3B, which is nine over two, plus C, which is five over four. I don't wanna to go to the next page, I'm gonna go up here. Um, 11 equals 3A plus 27 over 2 plus 5 over 4. All right. I am, I was going to say I was going to use my calculator, but I'm not. Um, 27 over 2 is 54 over 4. 54 plus 5 is 59 over 4. So I have 3a is 11 minus 59 over 4. That's negative 3.75. All right. Um, and I'm gonna write the result right here. A is negative five over four. Whatever afflicted me on the previous problem did not strike again, and we were able to find all three constants. So what do we got? Come up here. Integral, integral, integral. What do we got? A over x minus one, what is A? Negative five over four. Plus B, B is where? Nine over two, nine over two, x minus one, quantity squared. C, C is five over four, plus five over four x plus one dx. Now, we already know that we've got to do these three integrals separately. Um, now, I'm going to just rewrite them like we have been by now many times. on account of it's been nearly two hours. Yikes. Why are you not writing an integral symbol? Okay. All right, so let us do these and we're gonna be done. We are moments away from finishing. Um, so the last one here, you've seen the, these a bunch already. Natural log absolute value x plus one. I'll put the plus C. The first one, you've seen a bunch like this as well. Negative five over four ln absolute value x minus one. Now the middle one, you haven't seen yet today. Of course you know how to do it. It's uh, integral one over um, x minus one squared. Right, the way to do this is a u sub. You do u equals x minus one du is dx, so your integral is the integral of simply uh, one over u squared du, which is the integral of u to the minus two du, which is u to the minus one over minus one plus c. Then you plug in your x minus one and you get negative one over x minus one plus c. So you have that integral there that I worked out. So it's just gonna be negative one over x minus one. Oh, I left all that blank, okay. Um, so negative nine over two, one over x minus one. Uh, 
just slide that over with the others. And we're done. Okay, so um, the reason I wanted to make a point out of this last one here is not every integral is a natural log on these, okay? Sometimes you have to do a u sub like we did there. Sometimes you've got um, an inverse tangent or something like we had up here. Um, but most of them are natural logs, but not all of them. Okay? Okay. So that's it. Uh, we are one hour, 55 minutes in, so we're gonna call that a day. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that uh, mistake. Just figure out what I did wrong that was dumb and then fix it and then upload those for you guys. Um, all right, that's it for this one. See you next time.